what I talk about is really the benefits and how this scheme, this very important scheme, fits into the bigger picture for Birmingham uh, as I see it. Um, one thing that's, uh, if you, you know, it's, it's a great um, location to talk about the project because the site sits before us, it's out of that window over there. And one of the things about the site is just how important it is in the city context. Not, in, not necessarily in its own, just in its own right, but I really believe that when Exchange, when Exchange Square happens, what will happen is it starts to make the connection, which is a gap at the moment. Um, because what we've got is, this is the city, the, the larger city, city area. The big city plan area is largely defined by the coloured area, but what we've got in the centre is the intact historic core, which we all know, many of us work in it. But then it's the orange areas which are starting to happen. It's those which are largely covered by the enterprise zone, which you'll hear more about after me. But then in bright red there is the site that we're talking about today. And what you can see is that it's absolutely pivotal as a bridgehead between east side and the rest of the city. And in particular, it links the investment that's happened, the terrific investment that's happened in terms of the park and the education facilities, and in a few years, HS2, up towards Colmore Road and the established business district. Um, many people in the room will also remember where it's come from. And it, it, it's interesting, it was, it was Sir Albert that sort of launched the, the, the removal of the, uh, the, the concrete column now many years ago, uh, which paved the way for the transformation, which has taken too long, in my view, to happen in Eastside, but now is, 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 you know, it's got traction, it's moving forward solidly. And just again, just in terms of plan, this is where the site sits. And what it's wrapped by now, a really established retail quarter. I mean, there's a question mark about the timing of what's going to happen on this part of the city here, but the Cornwall Business District, district is, is established and it's becoming more established with the, the completion of Snow Hill. The Knowledge Quarter is probably the area and the district which has developed most and where the most investment has happened. Um, coupled with the park. And then there's the whole sort of regeneration of the park, the, 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 the works and the, the improvements to, to Millennium Point that are going on. And of course, we're now starting to see real evidence of the confidence, the building we're in is evidence of the confidence about what anticipates HS2 arriving. Because the whole swathe there of the HS2 isn't just HS2. Within that band there, there's going to be ample space for other office buildings, um, reuse of the Curzon Street station, some exciting possibilities being spoken about there already. So before the railway, before the HS2 happens, we're confident that we'll see all sorts of investments starting to happen, such as this one, which then cement east side, and then the last piece of the, the jigsaw puzzle coming in, I believe, will be HS2 itself. And these are just some of the projects which are on the ground and um, are, are nearing completion in east side. I suppose just in terms of um, the, the, what that means in terms of the layout, there was a previous consented outline application for both of the Mass House sites. And what we've been working with, uh, on with, with Nikhil for the last year is how we re-engineer that. And so it plugs into the change landscape because we've got much more certainty about what's going to, get, what's going to go on here. And also when the original master plan was carried out, HS2 wasn't even an idea. And so what we've been trying to do is to, is to respond for, for, to the way that the city's been changing. And I suppose the most important change to that is, we believe that Priory Queensway, which is the, the route outside there, leading down to the, the building we're in and then onto the park, will be the prime route, linking HS2 east side up through to the, the, the core business of the district. And so what we've designed as part of that is a new square. Um, and it's not... That, that, those are, those, that, so we, we see that as being a critical route which links down, then down to um, HS2 but also linking through to New Street Station and over to the universities and then up to the business district. But just zooming in, this is then a detailed layout of how we've configured the site. So it's very much using the McLaren building and it's got a thousand people working that or thereabouts at the moment. <coughs> and then it's developing the rest of the site around that. So when complete you'll have about 5,000 people working on this site. And so what we've, what we've got as, at the heart of it is a new square, which is Exchange Square, which is 
actually very, very bold in its scale. A lot of space has been given over to creating the right square, the right quantity and quality of public realm. It's about 70 metres by 50 metres. So just to put that into context, Uzel Square goes from there to there in its length. This is approximately the same sort of size as Brindley Place in, 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 in size. So it's, it's, it's actually a huge square. And that's a snapshot. That's, a, that's, a, that's an illustration of just giving, giving a feel of, of, of the space of, uh, of how, how, how deep and how wide it will be. And also gives an idea of how it will be animated. Um, we've, gone we've just got permission for an outline consent on, on the scheme. Mm -hmm. And that includes the office space, but also it includes very tall ground floor spaces which can be configured because if you've got that many people working in that space and you've got a hotel next door to it, what we're also very keen to see happen is that it's got active uses. So it becomes an interesting and active part of the link between the, 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 um, the city centre and east side. Just in terms of I mean, I'm not going to read out all of the um, all of the words on that slide there, but I think if, if you left with uh, three messages about the project in terms of what it, what it, what it will be delivering, the first one is that it's incredibly well connected. Um, before we even get HS2, it's within easy walking distance of Snow Hill, um, Moore Street Station, and of course the New Street Station. It's got the metro going right past its front door. Um, I think the second point and. Uh, it's already been mentioned uh, by Nick there that this, this is the first project that will plug into the BDEC. But in addition to that, um, we've designed the buildings and so they will start their life as pretty, uh, um, excellent but can easily be upgraded to outstanding. Similarly, that they start their lives as being a minimum B-rated energy certificate but can very quickly um, move to an A, to, to, to an a rating. Um, but perhaps the most sort of... Um, startling thing about the, the, the project is that it's ready to go. There's very little preparation needed to get the site. The site's clear. Um, there's no debt on the site, as Nick said. So the project is ready to go. And within the outline, um, these illustrations here show a scale of building, but I think it's worth flagging up that also it's a flexible consent in that there are maximum and minimum uh, parameters which we can move between. So the floor plates and the buildings that we're showing are indicative. Actually, the buildings can, 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 can morph to a, to, 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 to a degree. And so they could be, for example, the floor plates could be joined and also they could be subdivided. The buildings could be slightly larger and also got flexibility to go lower as well. So there's, there is some flexibility in there to adapt the buildings um, to, to, to exactly suit the, uh, the requirements of, of, of occupiers. Now just cantering through the buildings, this is the first, this is building one. There's no sequence to these, so there's one, two, and three. That doesn't mean to say they're going to happen in that order. These are just sort of notional um, just labels for the buildings at the moment. So building one is about 180,000 square feet, and it's got 16,500 square feet fl uh, floor plates. Each of those can be subdivided down to f at least four occupants. Building two is larger. Um, this is a more rectangular floor plate, a more regular floor plate, and it gives in total about 250,000 square feet with floor plates of about 20,000 square feet. That one has got an amazing sort of... So the building one has got, will be highly visible as you go up and down uh, Priory Queensway, very visible as you arrive at HS2, and when you look up towards the, central, uh, the city centre core. Um, building two... It's got this sort of Seagram building relationship to the square. It sits at the head of the square with its entr entrance on axis. I suppose the other thing is all the all this development sort of builds on McLaren um, as part of you know as part of the city. And when you start to see, uh, we've got an image later. The thing I realised is when we started working on the project, and there's a very useful model down there. All of a sudden, McLaren, which has stood out as a singular building for so long, all of a sudden starts to become part of the fabric. And the final building, um, the smaller building, building three there, <laughs> as Nick said, is a hotel which could take up to 250 rooms. And like this, this, this building, it's got its own life. It's not, it's, not just about the, it's not just about the hotel rooms. It starts to become a business location. It could accommodate events such as today. And we believe it will have a terrific ground floor um, catering facility, which adds to the life on the square as well. And then just... Uh, um, just finally on this picture, this is a, an artist's impression. The building it represents is what's been consented in terms of form and massing. 
But for me, this picture is really interesting because what it does for the first time, going back to that picture of when the concrete collar was taken away, it creates the very clear picture of what it's going to be like from east side moving up towards the city centre. At the moment, it's fair to say you've got a disconnect between these two pieces of investment. But what this allows you to see is, once these buildings are here, this is standing just, just effectively where we are now, is that all of a sudden the city centre continues all the way through. So the big change it, it will be that there will be a consistent, developed, high quality city experience all the way from Cornwall Road, from Cornwall Circus, all the way down to Eastside Park.